First off, it's good to be back doing this. And since I've been away for so long, I figured the best thing to do is to re-energize my space and give it a new look. Today, I'm gonna be working on the floor video, hoping to make this thing look a lot better. And as of right now, I will say I have no plans for this space. Everything's gonna be on the fly. I went many months of not using this space and this is what it looks like before. After working in this space for over eight years, it feels pretty odd seeing this space empty. From the time I cleared the garage out to this point, a lot of work has been done. I'll address some of those in a future video, but for now I want to keep the focus on the floor. I prepped the walls, scraped the floor, and applied a fresh coat of paint on the walls. Before I start the floor installation, I have to do some work around the perimeter that's likely unique to this garage space. Being that I'm gonna be installing baseboards, this is necessary. So right now this threshold is sort of just hanging out into space. I put this under here a long time ago, but now I'm going to figure out a new approach. Being that baseboard's gonna go in here and I want this to look nice when it's complete. I want to put some two by fours in here and I think these are going to be in my way. So I'm just going to snatch these off and redo it. As is, I won't be able to place the two by four directly under the doorway and the drywall. I'll need to remove some of the material on both sides so that the height of the two by four does fit tightly under the threshold. To attach the 2x4, I'm going to use these masonry nails. I'm not working with a straight wall here, so in this section, instead of using a 2x4, I have to use a 1x4. I just need some sort of support top and bottom of the baseboard since I am using rather large baseboards for this space. I'll continue to work my way around the garage until I'm able to put these pieces in. Before moving forward, I'm going to inspect the floor and see if there's any areas that I need to attend to. I do see some chipped and gouged areas in the concrete, so I'm going to fix those. I picked up some fast setting mix that's perfect for this application. All you need to do is just put some in a cup or a mixing bowl or something and just add some water. There are seven to 10 of these areas throughout the space, which I took care of. The goal here is to supply a solid backing for the floor. Before I started laying the floor, I drew a line out near the entrance of the garage. This line is where I want the transition to the floor to start. The floor is gonna be installed from left to right. So I'm gonna pick the area closest to the entry door into the house and work my way to the other side of the garage. I've installed a few laminate floors, but this is my first time installing vinyl. Apparently there are different versions to vinyls. This one is four millimeter thick, so it's pretty thin. I'll link the product I'm using down in the video description. You're probably wondering, why am I putting vinyl floors inside of a garage, AKA workshop? The short answer to that is I wanna test this product. And the best way to test it is with my own eyes. And let's see how it holds up in a tough environment. I wanna get all the information I need to about this before I commit to doing my entire house. I have tiles in the house that I do not like and I don't wanna rip them out because it's just gonna cost me so much time. 
if I can float this over it, I think I'll go that route. For years, I've been wanting to redo the floors in this garage, and I think this is just a perfect opportunity to give it a try because one, I get to cover up my existing floor. It's pretty bad. Aside from it being a good option to give this space a facelift, the installation should be pretty quick and simple. And that's why I want to test it out for myself. Unlike the laminate floors I've installed, you don't need an underlayment. This go right over the existing floor. While it looks pretty flimsy, I think it's a plus. It seems to take the shape of the floor, which means it should sit flat. To begin, I'll start off with the first plank, then snap the other ones on to finish the entire row. When I'm snapping these together, I'm trying to make sure the joint is as tight as possible. I have no confidence that the wall is straight in the garage, but I'm gonna use these spacers to try and set a good distance away from the wall. The instruction calls for a quarter inch gap, which I'll try to abide by as I go. Now that the first row is in place, I'm gonna start on the second row. You can take the cutoff from the first row to start the second row. To keep me on track, I took the transition channel, placed that along the line that I previously drawn. Now I'll butt the flooring up against it and continue the installation. Excuse me for a second, but the boss just came in. She is seeing the floors for the first time, pointed out areas that I needed to address, and I said, okay, cool. Now I have to go back to work. One of the biggest plus to this is you can take a utility knife, score this product, and put a little force and bend it. It will snap right off. When you start on the second row and all the remaining rows, you want to sit the new tile in the slot, butt it up against the tile next to it, then you'll want to take a mallet and hammer down the joint. You'll also want to use a tapping block to tighten up the joints. When I get to an area like this where I'm not just focused on a full length tile and just cutting off the end, my first approach is to cut the tile to the proper length, which will include the quarter inch space that's needed. Then I'll line this up and mark off the cutoff section. Again, the quarter inch spacing should be included on both parts. And after I score it, I'm gonna snap it off and it should fit into place. I'm about a third of the way through this project and this is all the waste I have. The garage door has a support beam that braces the garage door for hurricane winds. That beam goes down into the floor, so I need to drill a hole in the plank to line up with the hole that's already existing. There are times that you cannot get that joint as tight as possible. Just pull the plank away and check for any small debris. I got a look close to the wall with the planks. I didn't want to cut off the door trim and try and fight to get the planks under it, so I decided I'm gonna pull the trims off. 
I mean, I do have to install a new baseboard, so this shouldn't be a big deal. I installed the final piece of 2x4 here, and then it's on to finalizing the last row. The last row also needs to have the quarter inch spacing along the edge. I'm gonna take a chance around the door and hopefully this is gonna be all right. I don't wanna add an additional transition piece near the door and I don't wanna leave that quarter inch spacing there. I believe this way is gonna give me the cleanest look. I cut off a piece of the trim and now I can reinstall them. In order for me to cover up this large gap from the wall to the floor, I needed to use some large baseboard, so I'm going with one by eight. I got as many 16 footers as possible to cut down on the amount of joints I'll need to make. You can butt the baseboards up against each other to extend them, but I think it's better if you do the four to five miter. It'll be easier to shoot nails through both parts. All the walls I'm working on, they're not made equally. Finalizing this space turned into a bit of a challenge. On a couple of the walls, the concrete slab extend beyond the walls. My workaround was to remove some of the material from the baseboard on a lower part. The concrete slab actually bulge out more than the thickness of this baseboard. While the bottom may angle out, I'm gonna make it look like everything is fine. This intro door into the house has a different trim on it, so I'm removing this one completely to match the other door. The previous trim stopped at the bottom of the door, this one I'm running it all the way down to the floor. This trim has more parts, so it's a matter of taking measurements from the other door and duplicating it here. This should do it around the door. Now I can finish installing the baseboards. This should do it for the last piece of baseboard. To finish off the edge of the floor, I'm gonna use a vinyl reducer molding. It comes with a metal channel that needs to be mounted to the floor. I'm gonna drill the holes first, then I'll install the anchors. With the anchors installed, now I can sit the metal channel in place and tighten it down with the included screws. The molding should just snap into the channel and this is how I'm going to finish it off. Shifting my attention back to the baseboards, I've already used Bondo to cover up the nail holes and I'll use caulking to fill in all the cracks. Finally, I'll sand the baseboards and prep them for painting. I 
I put flat paint on a wall and a semi-gloss paint on a baseboard and trim. Now that the floor is complete, let's look at what it looked like before and where we're at now. This has been pretty exciting and I'm just happy to be back posting on this channel. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, I'll see you.